Hello guys, this is Fusion Forge, and this is going to be video number 3 for on-chip tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to make an ice cube tray and explore a few more uh, features of on-chip. So we are going to start this tutorial by starting a sketch on the top plane using Shift S, and then going to the top plane using Shift 5. We want to make a center rectangle, so use the shortcut R, and then drag outwards. For this rectangle, we need a width of 4 inches and a length of 12 inches. Oops. 12 inches. There we go. Zoom out. So now we have that. We just want to click Shift E to extrude it by 2 inches. And then click back on this top plane of this rectangle and then start another sketch. Instead of using center rectangles like we have been this entire time, instead for this one, we want to use a corner rectangle. We just want to click and this and drag. The keyboard shortcut for a corner rectangle, in case you were wondering, is G. So for this rectangle, we wanted to have a width of 1.3 inches and a length of 1.7 inches. And then we want to dimension it to the left side of this rectangle right here. We want it to have 0.136 from the top top and from the side we wanted to have a distance of 0.18 inches now we want to employ the linear pattern feature to just click on all of these right here and you see this arrow just drag outwards till you see all three of these and then you want to drag this down to see two rows. So now for this, you can either drag it in till it looks right, or you can just click and just say two inches for the length. And for the length between the rectangles, you want it to be 1.48 inches. For the number of rectangles, we want it to be eight. And because of the glitch I've talked about previously, I'm just going to have to click on this. It's going to finalize, and then I'm just going to go right here and put a negative right here. So negative 2. Now that all of this is done, we're just going to click the check mark. And now we are going to start another plane. We're going to click on the top right here, and then switch to the right side using Shift using shift 1 we're going to go to the, to the front side and in case your plane type is wrong make sure that it's set to offset and the offset dis distance could be 1.2 inches now this is offsetting to the wrong, wrong direction so we're just going to click this opposite direction and now it's going to be completely correct and we can use orbit using right click and then drag using middle click start a sketch on this plane that we created go to top plane and use another one of those corner rectangles that i previously talked about and for this corner rectangle we wanted to have a width of 0.68 and a length of one and now making sure that sketch number two is visible we want to click D for dimensioning, click the top right here, and click this right here. And then we want the distance between these two to be 0 0.35 from the top. And from the left, we want it to be 0 0.31. And then we want to use the linear pattern feature again. Click on all of these, and then drag outwards, and then drag down. We want to use the same numbers that we did before in the previous linear pattern. So objects need to be 8, distance between them needs to be 1.48, and then the distance between rows needs to be 2 inches. I'm just going to click and finalize that. So now we're just going to finish this. and. This may seem counterintuitive right now, but we're going to hide part one and use the loft feature.
to click on both of these rectangles. Make sure it's set to new so that it generates a new part. We want to use the same thing again for the bottom row. And in case you are wondering why we can't just click on both of the sketches and do it like that, is because if multiple sketches get set in a loft feature, it starts glitching like this because it's trying to loft to every, it's going to try to drag the loft throughout each of these different faces. So do this, make sure that each of these is a separate part and then show part one. Make, it is going to seem a little bit glitchy right now, but now we can hide ske both of the sketches and we can hide all of our planes using P. So we go back to the top line and we are going to use the linear pattern. For entities to pattern, we're going to just click on, click go right here and click on part two and part three. For direction, we just want to click this right here. And because as you can see right now, they're both going in the wrong direction. So we just want to click this opposite direction option right here and increase the instant count to eight. For the distances, we need 1.48. And just to make sure that they are in the correct view, we can just toggle this on and off and we can see that it's completely correct. And instead of new, we want to click remove. And for merge scope, we want to say merge with all. And then just click the check mark. Here we go. So this kind of looks like the ice cube tray that we want to make. Now we are just going to click Shift F. We can't just click the linear pattern right here to fly all of these. Instead, we want to click the faces for each of these separately. To fly all of these four corners. And then unfortunately, because we want to fly it by a value of 0.142, Oh, we can't just click on these faces to make it look correct. Instead, we have to click on each of these lines separately. selecting all of these corners just either click outside but that's not gonna work so I'll click that green check mark to see all of these flight sides and then we want to flight each of the corners again so using shift F we just want to click on all four of these and flight it by 0 0.4 inches so we're left with this now we're actually going to revisit an old feature but using first using Shift 7, go to isometric wheel, so that it's a bit more plain what we're going to do. We're going to use the shell command. So in the toy block, I did show you that if you click a face on the shell command, it will just remove that face and till the specified shell thickness. But what we want to do, and we can't just click the hollow, but what we want to do is click on all of the faces except for the top face, right? Except for the top face. Leaving just the tray that we have created before. Shift 7, go back to asymmetric view, and this looks almost complete. But now we want to make a midplane. So how you make a midplane is you go to plane type, and then right here it should say midplane. Just click on both of these length faces on the ice cube tray, and you should see a plane appear. All right, so now we are going to start a sketch on this plane that we have just created. And we're going to go to the front face, zoom in to the left corner, and then make a sort of reverse L shape. It is, this time it is okay for it to have constraints. And just make sure that 
these constraints kind of make sense. So first, make the horizontal. First, in case you have some non-straight lines, make sure you uh, correctly horizontally and vertically constrain it. For a horizontal constraint, the keyboard shortcut is H. For the vertical constraint, it is V. And now that you have this fairly normal reverse L, you want to start dimensioning it. So for the top here, we're going to want it to be 0 0.079. For, and then we want to use the equal constraint right here to make both of these equal to each other. And then we want to use the dimension, again, to dimension this line to be 0 0.118 inches, and then this bottom line to be 0 0.197 inches. Now we want to use the coincident constraint to click on this line and then this line to make them congruent to each other. And then this line and this line to make them congruent to, them con congruent to each other. And then we just want to finish this. So now that we have this shape right here, this sketch, we can hide this plane. We want to use the sweep command for the sketch. We can just click on this sketch right here. And for the sweep path, we want to click on the outer edge of our, our ice tray right here to just perfectly have that outer rim that ice trays normally have. And we want it to merge. And this is going to be making an ice cube tray in Onshake. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a good day.